So let's continue right where we left off with this video. And uh, let's see how they explain that they secured the oil fields around Dyer's or secured, right? Governor, about how that plan is going to look in the long term. And I wouldn't want to get ahead of the Secretary of Defense in describing that. But as of right now, we have secured the oil fields at Deir Ezzar, generally east of the Euphrates River, in the vicinity of uh, Conoco and Green Village, for those of you that follow. Green Village it sounds like an American city name. <laughs> what is that? What is Green Village? <laughs> Green Village, Syria. <laughs> uh, the details on the ground. Phil. Uh, General, could you uh, confirm that Baghdadi, we, we, his final moments, there was, uh, the president said that he was whimpering and crying in his final moments. And also, uh, could you give us any better sense, you talked about a substantial electronics recovered from the site. Um, what, what did, could you elaborate a bit on what that means? Sure. So let me start with the second part. No, I can't tell you anything about what we took off the site. You'll appreciate that. We're going to exploit that and we expect it to help us as we go forward. So now about Baghdadi's last moments. They blew up the site right, right after the raids, but they supposedly took some electronics with them. You know what would have been better? To secure the site and then have, uh, you know, as much time as you want to gather any evidence that you want. But of course, everything's fake, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> uh, I, I can tell you this. He crawled into a hole with two small children and blew himself up while his, <laughs> while his people stayed on the ground. So you can deduce what kind of person it is based on that activity. So that would be just my empirical observation of what he did. I'm not able to confirm anything else about his last seconds. I just can't confirm that one way or another. All right. Uh, sir, um, were there reinforcements? Did any other ISIS personnel try to approach that position? Um, and was there fire that, uh, that was exchanged? There's footage of uh, a white van that was riddled with bullets that was right next to the scene. Sure, so uh, there were no other ISIS forces in the area. We are completely confident of that. He had been up there for an extended period of time hiding. There were other uh, militant groups in the area that Probably yes, did yes, not know was, he was there. The, the Once whole they saw thing the is that actually the compound was on the territory of Jabhat al-Nusra, which is a terrorist group that is hostile towards ISIS. So it makes no sense that he would be hiding there in the first place, since it's enemy territory for him. But that's a whole other story. So uh, he actually confirms here that there were no other ISIS forces close by and just forces of other groups uh, land and began to operate, they began to flow toward it. So, but they were not flowing to reinforce him. They were flowing toward what they saw, thought was, was perhaps a Turk military operation, perhaps a Russian military operation, perhaps an American military operation. They didn't know. So the white van well, the that you Russians talk about was one of the vehicles that displayed it. hostile intent, came toward us and it was destroyed. In addition to the video that I just shared for you, with you of the fighters on the ground that were addressed by the gunships. Casualties are made so, you know, we don't. Uh, uh, out there, it's going to be hard to know. We use the figure of about 10 to 15, but I, but we really don't know for sure. And I don't know that we're ever going to know that because we're not going to go back out there and count. Jennifer. Sir, you mentioned that you staged from within Syria. Was there anything about the changes on the ground in the last two to three weeks with the U.S. pulling back forces, with Turkey coming across, that caused you to accelerate this operation or change the timing of this? The truth is that they needed this operation to go back into Syria and to say ISIS is still not defeated and we need to stay there, I don't know for how long, and protect the oil from ISIS. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, right. Protect the oil, that's the most important thing. <laughs> so, uh, Jennifer, uh, absolutely not. We, we, we chose the time based on a variety of factors, weather, certainty, uh, lunar data, a variety of things like that. And while it might have been convenient to use bases there, the United States military has the capability to go almost anywhere and support ourselves even at great distances. So, so if they have that capability, why would you stay in Syria? I mean, if you can you know, flying from other countries and kill those alleged leaders of terrorist groups, then you don't need to stay in Syria if you can do that from other countries. I mean, it makes no sense. So that was not a limiting factor. We, we struck because the time was about right to do it then, given the totality of the intelligence and the other situation. Yeah, the time, the time was about right because uh, the U.S. was about to pull out troops from Syria, but now that we have this whole propaganda about ISIS resurging, you will have to stay there because uh, you need to protect the oil, right? You need to protect the oil from some imaginary guys in black suits. Black, no, not black suits, but, well, actually, that's the real criminals. But um, 
in black turbans from some imaginary fictitious guys in black turbans hanging out in the middle of the desert. Makes no sense. And basically, they, they have no more territory left. There is many thousands of them have probably been killed by Russian airstrikes and by the Syrian government forces. So they don't have much of a following left either. The threat is virtually stamped out. And as if a small insignificant caliphate in the middle of Syria that pretty much lives still in the 16th century um, is a threat to the biggest military power in the world is debatable. I mean, it's very unlikely that they are a threat. Especially since they can, uh, you know... I mean, they have all of the surveillance capabilities in the world. They, if this was real, they would have found Baghdadi, you know, 10 years ago, probably. <laughs> so that's uh, it from this video. Let's move on to another video. Um, Baghdadi. Maybe we can look at the comedia, yes. com comedy, not the comedia. The comedy disguises, well, the propaganda disguises comedy. And a good example for that would be The Daily Show, which once used to be funny when Jon Stewart was still around. But now it's just propaganda. So let's take a look at this. It's official. The leader of ISIS is dead. And you heard what they said. They found him by interrogating his courier, which is a great reminder to always tip your delivery guy, people. Yeah. <laughs> 20% for good service, 30% if you're a terrorist who's trying to hide your location. <laughs> now, over the past couple of days, we've started learning the details of this raid, and to be honest, it sounds like something straight out of a movie. Yeah, because The secret is, operation beginning at 5 is, p.m. It's Saturday night. It's a movie. It pretty much is a movie. That's what it is. It sounds like something from a movie because it is a movie. Might as well be. Nine, eight Chinook helicopters Remember took... Remember when they killed Bin Laden? They made a movie out of it. Zero Dark Thirty just to reinforce the narrative and to put those pictures in the brains of uh, everyday Americans and people around the world. Off from a Kurdish controlled area in Iraq, flying low and fast, taking on gunfire and returning the fire before landing in northern Syria. Once on the ground, the commandos blowing a hole through Baghdadi's hideout. The front door had been booby trapped. You know, you think you go through the door. If you're a normal person, you say, knock, knock, may I come in? Uh, the fact is that they blasted their way into uh, the house in a very heavy wall, and it took them literally seconds. Yes, yes. Instead of knocking on the door and asking ISIS if they could come in, the special forces instead chose to blow a hole through the wall which must have been traumatizing for Trump to watch. He was just sitting there like, no, why did you damage that beautiful wall? That wall didn't do anything to anybody. Why would you do that? Now Mexicans are gonna pour into Albert Daddy's house and take all ISIS jobs. You know, you know, honestly, the one cool thing about Donald Trump is that unlike other presidents, He's never trying to communicate the gravity of this moment and keep the details to a minimum. No, he sounds like a dude on the local news who just saw some shit. They blasted their way in and then uh, all hell broke loose. He died after running into a dead end tunnel, whimpering and crying and screaming all the way. He died like a dog, he died like a coward. He reached the end of the tunnel as our dogs chased him down. He ignited his vest, killing himself. Nobody was even hurt. Or canine, as they call, I call it a dog, a beautiful dog, a talented dog, was injured and brought back. Yes, yes, I call it a dog. <laughs> so Baghdadi died like a dog, but a dog is also the hero. Some very mixed messages about dogs in this story. More importantly, though, it's weird that al-Baghdadi tried to escape through a dead-end tunnel. Does nobody else find that weird? Yeah, I find it weird. I mean, it's, it makes no sense. I mean, <laughs> blows the lid of the whole story as being probably made up. <laughs> Why does a terrorist compound have a dead end tunnel? And also, isn't a dead end tunnel just a cave? What is that? Exactly, like, exactly, my this? Point, exactly my point. If people had uh, critical thinking skills, 
that they would probably understand that this is all bullshit. The tunnel, was it built by the same people who run the New York subway? Is that what it was? <laughs> Back daddy ran there, he's like, yeah, then, you said the tunnel would be finished by now. He's like, look, buddy, there's a lot of things that are supposed to happen in life, all right? My wife was supposed to be a double date. Turns out I'm gay and my husband and I are living our truth. What do you want to do? What do you want to do, buddy? Now, whether you like Trump or not, you have to admit that this is a big win in the fight against ISIS. But Trump is the only person who can turn a unifying occasion into a dick measuring contest. This is the biggest there is. This is uh, the worst ever. Uh, Osama bin Laden was very big, but Osama bin Laden became big with the World Trade Center. This is a man who built a whole, uh, as he would like to call it, a country, a caliphate, uh, and was trying to do it again. What are you doing? <laughs> You don't have to pretend this guy is a bigger get than Bin Laden. First of all, it's childish. Secondly, he's not, all right? Bin Laden changed the entire world forever. It's 18 years after 9-11, and I still can't take four ounces of lotion onto an airplane. Exactly. That's, that's the point, right? That's why they did 9-11. I go on vacation, and my skin is dry as f That's how bad a terrorist Bin Laden was. We are actually in these streets because of Bin Laden. All these guys are bad. You don't have to weigh them out. But once again, Trump has managed to turn a nonpartisan American victory into another political fight. Who deserves more credit? Is it Trump or Obama? Do presidents even deserve any credit for military victories? The whole conversation is ridiculous. Because we all know who really made this thing happen. It was that canine. Beautiful dog, talented dog. Oh. As I call it, a dog. <laughs> that dog deserves the highest honor America has to offer, which is its own movie. <laughs> so we made a trailer for it. In theaters this Christmas, the story of a dog who will warm your heart and kill El Baghdadi. <laughs> but first, you'll have to train. This is El Baghdadi. Go get him, boy! For whatever may happen. This is how they'll torture you. So you're gonna kill the leader of ISIS? And you're gonna piss on his bones? Damn, you're hardcore. Because the only thing that stops a bad dude is a good boy. Zero Bark 30. <laughs> yeah, so that was actually refreshing since it was not horrible comedy, like usually. But, um, yeah, so, I mean, even he asks the question, what, what is a dead-end tunnel? It doesn't exist. It's, ju it's just a hole in the ground. And uh, what terrorist leader would build a tunnel that doesn't lead anywhere? <laughs> yeah, so that's it for me. See you guys another time. It's FYGP tuning out.